Hey everybody and welcome to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. And at the time of this recording, I just want to say good morning everybody. I know it may not be morning by the time that you watch this video, but good morning and TGIF to everyone. I uh, hope you had a great night last night watching the first round of the NFL Draft. We're, we are definitely going to get into the draft talk today in this video but uh first if you are supporting this channel or if you want to support it support this channel please consider subscribing just hit that red button down at the bottom that says subscribe and also make sure you hit the notification button because i don't always come out with videos at the same exact time every single day. So you're gonna to want to make sure that notification bell is enabled so that you will be notified when I come out with a brand new video. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into today's video. So Washington has made their first selection in the 2022 draft. We decided just like I kind of pondered that we may would do that I felt like was the best option for us to do, which was to trade down in the draft to pick up some multiple draft picks, namely a third round draft pick, since we didn't have any third round draft picks. Um, and we did so. We picked up a third round draft pick. And we also picked up an extra fourth round draft pick as well. We went from 11 down to 16 now we didn't have a trade partner in green bay like it was kind of rumored but we have we did have a trade partner with the new orleans saints who uh, play ball with us and we traded down to 16 like i said uh the saints traded up to 11 and so we decided to use our 16th pick uh overall in the draft to pick jahan dotson so, Jahan Dotson, welcome to the NFL, my friend. So, Jahan Dotson, now, he is comparable to Taylor Lockett, which is a very uh, welcoming uh, comparison, if, if I do say so myself. Now, he's not a very tall uh, wide receiver, certainly. Uh, only at 5'11", 178 pounds, um, but he has a very good reach in terms of being able to um, get up and grab those uh, footballs out of the air, <laughs> I guess the best way to put it. Um, you go back and look at his highlights. He, he's uh, very amazing. He's, he's uh, from what I've heard, he's an uh, amazing young man. Um, you know, just uh, he, he played on a team that didn't have the best quarterback um, a fair quarterback, but uh, he really was probably the best offensive weapon, weapon that uh, Penn State had, and he really just tore it up. I mean, made some great plays. I would uh, also say that he could also be compared to Deshaun Jackson because he is in a very explosive home run hitter play uh, player. So, you know, he is going to be another one of those guys who can stretch the field. You know, we said the same thing about Diami Brown last year. And Diami Brown can still be that guy. The only thing is, you know, we needed a quarterback who can stretch the field as well. And, you know, I'm not going to continue to to bash on, on Heineke because I love Heineke. Uh, but Heineke is just not the stretch the, the football down the field type of quarterback. Uh, Carson Wentz is. And so Carson Wentz can get the ball down the field to his receivers. And so now that we have a quarterback who can do that, we got receivers other than Terry McLaurin who can stretch the field. Now we got three. Uh, you know, people probably will have already given up on Diami Brown because that's kind of how I am going to bash on our fellow uh, fans because I have to. I'm sorry, but that's kind of how 
Washington fans are. You know, we give up on people too quickly. We give up on coaching staffs too quickly because that's what we have been conditioned to do, unfortunately. Um, and it's, I won't necessarily blame the fans completely for that because, yeah, that's what we have been conditioned to seeing for the last 20-plus years. And so you pick up on that mentality after a while, and so you start acting upon that mentality, right? So having said all that, people have already given up on Diami Brown. I haven't quite given up on him yet. He did not have a good first year at all. But you know what? That's that's okay. Let's pair him up with a quarterback who can get the ball downfield. I think that that Diami Brown can have a much better sophomore season in Washington knowing that there is a quarterback who is willing to stretch the field to get the ball downfield to him. Now you have uh, Jahan Dotson who can stretch the ball, who can make plays. Now you got, you know, of course, you got Terry McLaurin. I mean, you know, there's a lot of it ifs, certainly, because you don't really know how these draft picks are going to pan out until they actually step foot on the field and start playing. I do realize that. But, you know, you, you have the potential here to have three home run hitter wide receivers. You know, we haven't really had three awesome wide receivers like this in a long time. And so Carson Wentz has weapons now. Terry McLaurin has somebody else who can take the pressure off of him. And that's one thing that, you know, the analysts and, uh, and the talking heads last night on the NFL channel kept saying that Terry McLaurin needs somebody to take the pressure off of him. You know, as if that, you know, Diamond Brown was was just the figment of everybody's imagination. And, you know, my thought process was, well, if we don't draft anybody, let's still look at Brown because he can still, you know, I, I think he can still be that guy. Uh, but he needed a quarterback who can get the ball downfield and give him some opportunities. Now, Brown didn't always take advantage of those opportunities when given, but he didn't really get a lot of opportunities anyway, right? So having said all that, um, let's see what happens. But we have the potential right now of having three great wide receivers. Now, the downfall, we have three receivers who – are not the tallest wide receivers. And so here comes the bashing uh, that I read a lot on Twitter last night is that people want it tall receivers. They want trees because they equate tall receivers to better receivers. And, you know, forgetting, wait a minute, what about, what about Sims? We have Sims, you know, Silky Sims. He's a tall receiver. He's very dependable. I love the guy. He can get open in the middle. He can make those those catches. He's a tall receiver. He's just fine. Why can't we go with him, right? And so I, I guess I guess I'll say this. There was so much negativity last night in social media surrounding this pick and surrounding what Washington did last night. You know, a lot of people said there were so many great players to choose from. Um, you know, the offensive players, uh, Washington passed up on, uh, you know, all of them, passed up on uh, Hamilton, Williams, uh, Williamson. Uh, um, they, they passed up on all of these other, what people consider surefire, going to be someday all pro players. And, you know, to get a guy that, you know, was a panic pick. And I kept hearing this, a panic pick. And it just really, it kind of steamed me because I'm like, where are you getting this from? Why are you saying that this was a panic pick? You know, it just makes no sense to me whatsoever. And so people then started spreading the thing like, Ron Rivera and Martin Mayhew, they didn't even talk to this guy. They just went down the board and said, hey, look, here's a receiver. Let's just pick him. We need to pick somebody. You know, oh, my dear Lord, all the other guys are gone. What are we going to do? Do you honestly do you honestly believe for one minute that Washington would have put themselves in that position? Number one, 
they had planned to to move down in the draft board this whole time. It wasn't that they got to draft night and they were like, you know what? What the heck? Let's just move down. They had planned this stuff out, folks. I mean, how naive can you be? They had planned to move down. They had, yes, they had these other guys that were on their draft board that if they were available, they probably would have picked them. But... Jahan Dodson was also on their draft board, and they, he was also very high on their draft board. And number two, the panic pick deal. Talking about they picked him, they didn't even they didn't even talk to the guy. Well, that is another lie. They did talk to Jahan Dodson. They only had to talk to him once because they were very impressed by the young man. They didn't need to talk to him again. They didn't have any other questions about Dodson because they were very impressed by the young man. And they were impressed enough that they were like, you know what, if he's available, I'm going to draft him. And guess what? He was available, so they drafted him. You know, he was available probably because, guess what, maybe his size. And guess what? He didn't play on a team that had a very good quarterback. He didn't play on a team that really surrounded, that he was surrounded by outstanding players. So there was a lot of knocks, but other than that, he was he was an elite player on Penn State last year. And so because of all of that, he was probably available, right? And so Ron Rivera said, look, we only had to talk to him once. We already knew what type of character, what type of young man this guy was. We were very impressed by him. And then he goes on to, to show the example of, I only had to talk to Luke Keekley. He's I always murder his last name. He only had to talk to Luke one time and drafted Luke. Now, that turned out to be a pretty good draft pick, if I do say so myself. I don't think anybody can disagree about that, right? Uh, inversely, he had to talk to Cam Newton several times because, yes, there were some character issues that he needed to clear up that he questioned. He had lots of questions for. So if you're having to talk to some of these guys multiple times, then there could be there's certain questions. And that's not, folks, that's not always a good thing. You know, if you've got to ask, you know, there's still some things bugging me about this guy that I just, I need to clear up. I need to ask again. That's not always a good thing, folks. So, you know, if you can sit down, you can talk to somebody one time and you're like, and you, you go away so impressed, that's, that's better, right? I mean, if you're getting interviewed, you know, for a job, do you, do you rather have somebody sit down and and you walk away feeling like you really did well in that interview, and that, and the interviewer is like, man, I was impressed by that individual, so impressed. Rather than them coming back, it's like, I have a few more questions because I'm just not quite clear on some things you said. You know, that, that can raise some red flags. And so that's the point I'm trying to make. They didn't need to talk to him a lot. So, you know, the, the thing with Dotson is, yes, he was surprised that the commanders drafted him because, yeah, he probably thought maybe they were not that interested in him, but, in fact, they were extremely interested in him. They were just so impressed that, you know, they didn't want, you know, they didn't need to, to bring him back for a second or third interview. You know, they were very impressed, and if he was going to be available, they were going to draft him. Yes, they may have had some other guys higher on list that if they were available, those guys were getting drafted before Dotson. But who knows? They may would have done some willing and dealing and gotten another draft pick to have gotten back into the first round to have gotten Dotson. Or maybe if Dotson had stayed, because even Dotson himself had said, you know what, I really thought that I was going to be a second-day uh, draft pick. Who knows? Maybe Washington would have, moved up into the second round from their position and gotten Dotson in the, on the second day. So they were definitely 
you know, interested in him. Now, you know, was Dotson a reach? Time will tell. But all in all, I am very pleased in the pick. Now, I will say I would have rather had a safety because I think we need secondary help. I always feel like our secondary is not quite on par. We're always missing pieces. Um, but, you know, our guys, the guy I wanted was off the board at that point. So wide receiver was really the next uh, position. I would love to have had a guard, but all the guards were gone. Tackles, you know, I mean, we're pretty solid with tackles at this point. You know, I'm fine with Leno. I think Leno is, is solid. Um, Cosme has, has been a good player for us. So, you know, those guys like that were good. I don't think we needed to draft a tackle per se. I would have loved to have had one of those guards if, if one of those guards were available, but they were not available. So I think, honestly, it was the best pick for us. It was the... The, the next best player available. And that was the other thing that I think that somebody uh, really tried to, um, they were so upset with me over like, you know, you don't draft for need, you draft the best player available. Well, how do you know that that was not the best player available for Washington at number 16? I believe it was. And now we have a third rounder to look at. We have uh, an additional fourth rounder. And now we're heading into day two of the draft, so I'm excited because we are really going to have a lot of draft picks. Um, it's a lot of guys uh, coming off the board today who is going to contribute to this team a lot this year, so I'm excited about that. And who knows? Uh, we can still will and deal with uh, Deron Payne. I really think we're still going to wind up trading him for some more draft picks could happen. Anyway, folks, let me know what you think in the comments section. Uh, just keep it nice and neat. Keep it happy. Um, also, uh, if you could, please like, share this video. And again, subscribe to this channel. You can use your subscriptions. Visit my links down in the description. Um, um, I started to say panel. I just I really don't know. Just Visit my links downstairs if you don't mind. I have a Patreon page. Would love to have, see your support. Have your support. That being said, TGIF. <laughs>